Every AI engineer is talking about MCP servers these days like it's a new Sabrina Carpenter song, but nobody talks about why we need them in the first place and what problem they solve. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick, clear, and simple explanation for why we need MCP servers, how they work, as well as show you some live examples. And by the end of the video, you'll be able to clearly understand why we need MCP servers, how they work, and then how to also use them in your own applications so that you can become a better AI engineer. Before MCP servers were a thing, what you had to do if you wanted to connect an LLM to a custom data source or API is that you had to write custom code for your LLM's API and your data's API and stitch them together. This doesn't seem like a big issue until you start adding in multiple LLMs and multiple data sources because for each LLM, you have to write custom API integrations for each of the data sources. And as you add more and more agents, you have to write for each of these agents connections to each of the other data sources and APIs. And this doesn't scale well and adds a lot of duplication to your code base. Langchain is a library that tries to help make these, this connection part easier to do, but it doesn't completely solve the issue. And so a few months ago, Anthropic released the MCP protocol, which allows you to connect your LLM to any data source through the MCP server. The MCP server is a standardized way to connect any LLM to any data source that you want that's supported by the MCP protocol. A really good analogy for an MCP server is it's very similar to a USB port. Let's say the LLM is your computer and you want to connect multiple devices to it. Each of the different devices with their different ports can connect to this single MCP server USB port or dongle. And then this dongle then can connect to the original LLM computer so the LLM can then access the other devices. And so the key reason why we need MCP servers is that we can avoid having to write custom code implementations for each of these LLMs to each of these specific data sources. So before you had to write, say if you had N agents and M data sources, you had to write N times M functions in your code base, which creates a lot of duplication and large code bases, and also creates a lot of maintenance that you have to do. With an MCP server, you just need to create the server that connects to these databases or these data sources, and then you can connect any LLM that you want to it. So you only have to write N, N LLM connections plus M data source connections. And you also can have multiple MCP servers in order to help you scale well. And if you check out this GitHub in the description below, you'll see that there are hundreds of servers that already have support for each of the APIs that you're likely already using so that you can easily connect them to your multiple agents. And the way it works is very similar to how it would work for most services. Let's say for a Google MCP server, you can give it access to your Gmail, Calendar, or even your Slack. And then you can connect it to a custom MCP server or using the MCP server above. And the idea is that this would scale well to any kind of third party community or custom servers that you write. So if you're in a company and you have a specific API that's only internal, you can create an MCP server just for that API to then connect to the other LLMs that you're using at work. Here's how the MCP protocol works in a little more detail. You have an app running and you have some prompt that needs to be answered by your LLM. So what you do with that prompt is you give it to your back end or a part of your MCP client, and then your client takes that prompt and gives it to the server. And the client asks the server, what tools do you have to answer my prompt? The MCP server responds with a list of tools that I can use to access external data sources like tools and resources. Then the client's gonna take that list of tools and then ask the LLM, do I need these tools to accurately answer my prompt? Then the LLM is gonna respond, here are the exact tools that I think you need to run to be able to answer the prompt. Then the MCP client's gonna tell the, go back to the MCP server and tell it, these are the tools that I need you to run to answer the prompt. Then the MCP server is gonna return the results of running the tools and the resources, where resources are accesses to external databases and data sets, whereas tools are kind of like programmatic functions that'll run or execute certain commands like web scraping. Then with the tool results, the MCP server is gonna give them back to the MCP client, and the MCP client's gonna take those tool results, give it to the LLM, include it with the original prompt, and then the LLM is gonna use the results from those tools to give the final answer back to the app, and then this whole loops in a cycle where the client basically asks the LLM twice to answer the question. And here's an example of what a local MCP server looks like. When I say local, I mean it's running locally. 
So it uses the fast MCP library in Python to actually implement the server. It doesn't take that many lines of code. It's pretty short and it uses the weather.gov API to actually access the real time weather. And here you have the actual API specific implementation, but note that you really only have to create this once for the server. You don't have to do this multiple times again. And for these two functions, the get alert and the get forecast, you'll see this at MCP tool decorator on it. This is a way for the MCP server to signify to the MCP client that we have these two functions as tools available if you think that it'll help you more accurately answer the prompt. And we can actually just run this MCP server locally, or what I could also do is attach it to the config files of your GitHub Copilot, Cursor, or even some external service like Claude Desktop or ChatGPT. And generally all of these will have an MCP server's JSON configuration file. And what you need to do is you need to add in the specific server and the command to run it, as well as the other command line arguments. And this will be able to have the UI be able to run the server in the background so that you yourself don't actually have to run it. And I'll show you an example with Claude Desktop right here. Here we have the weather server. It's already running. Claude Desktop already has it running in the background ready to go. So I can ask it a question. Let's say like, what is the weather in New York right now? And then what it should do is use the two functions that we created, the get forecast and the get alerts function to actually answer the question. Here you see it used the get forecast function and correctly used the latitude and longitude we defined in the function and actually used them right here. Then the MCP server gave the response, here is some, some information about the weather and that it gave back to the LLM, which the LLM gave back to me from the client and gave me the answer here. The other MCP server we have configured is a Firecrawl MCP server. And this is an example of a remote MCP server. Since we're not hosting this, Firecrawl itself, the cloud platform is hosting it, which is just a web scraper. And I found that JSON through their GitHub right here. And you basically can just do this for any MCP server. They should have this JSON that allows you to add it into your configuration for your, again, for your Claude, your GitHub Copilot, or your cursor desktop files. So once you have this configured and you added your own API key because this is remotely hosted, we're not hosting it, you can then actually access it via your applications. So for example, I'm gonna show you how it works in Claude desktop. Here we have it running. And then I could ask Claude a question like, what kind of architecture does MCP resemble on this blog? And then what it should do is it should actually access the Firecrawl MCP functions. Scrape is one of the functions where it's actually gonna scrape the website in order to actually answer the prompt. It's gonna give the response from the MCP server right here. And it's gonna give this response to the LLM, which we're using Claude Sonnet. And it's gonna give me the correct answer right here. In this video, we took a look at why we needed MCP servers, how they work, and then also some examples of them. So now you know that if you're building some kind of agentic system in your software, I highly recommend checking out MCP servers and implementing them in your app so that you're able to add more agents and add more data sources to your app and scale a lot better than before. And if you're interested in learning more about AI tools, how to use them, as well as some example apps that I've created with the AI tools that also use AI, I highly suggest checking out the rest of my channel. I think you'll find it very interesting.